Everfree Guardian, Chapter 5, Part 5 Narrowing his eyes, the human stormed into the hut, his footsteps heavy with a weight in his backpack and the materials of his boots. One by one, the mares got out of his way, intimidated by his weapon alone and even more so by his entrance. Nate stepped briefly to glare Fluttershy, making her back away and shy behind her mane in fear. Then proceeded to Zakora, who was looking down at the spilled brew that was soaking up into the wood. Great, now they had to start all over. Grabbing the cauldron, Nate hefted it back upright, seeing that some of the contents inside were still there. If they added more water and a touch more of what Zakora had on standby, they could probably replicate what was lost with ease. But now they only had enough for one last chance at curing these idiotic mares behind the human. Glancing to Zakora, he gave a worried look to her, silently addressing her with concern of her health. Feeling his worry, she waved him off. Do not fret, I am but merely upset. These ponies have charged into my home and believe me to be the same as the monsters that roam. They turned and looked back at the ponies, his glare intensifying once more before he drew his bag around, sifting through the pockets and bringing out the ingredients. Despite the mess, Sakura's attitude was still as relaxed and welcoming as ever. Taking the flower petal, she beamed as she added more ingredients and liquid to the mixture. Oh yes, the poison lust's petal. With this, I can make a new brew that will make the suffering effect subtle. She quickly danced around the new setup, placing things back to where they were she took out a few books and vials, as well as the tools to crunch and grind the materials in a powder. As she began working, the ponies were quick to interject, but one rack of Nate's shotgun made them think twice. He wasn't gonna let them fuck this up again, and he was not happy with any of them right now anyways. Twilight feeling her own curiosity over Ryder Fear looked up at the Guardian that she was told very little about. Um, who are- they turned his head away from her, watching as Zakora placed the new ingredients into the cauldron. Twilight pouted a bit at the notion of being ignored, but let it go she turned back to Zakora. You ponies found me guilty of cursing you, but you knew not of what you walked into. She pointed to a book towards the side of the room, one that was thrown about in the ensuing chaos moments prior to Nate's arrival. If you remember back, you will find that my words were quite exact. Many of the ponies were bewildered by Zakora's rhyming language, but with the aid of the book Zakora pointed to, Twilight caught on to what she was alluding to. Beware, beware, you pony folk. Those leaves of blue are not a joke. In the book that she read, she found this blue plant documented in one of its various sections. It was an infectious weed that was called Poison Joke. So those things that you said were a warning about the plants that we were running through? Zakora nodded. That plant is much like poison oak, but its results are like a joke. What tarnation is that supposed to mean? Zakora looked up at Applejack, who was on top of Twilight's head. It means that this plant does not breed wrath, but instead wants a laugh. Will some pony please talk normal? Nate shook his head with a small sigh, as Twilight put the pieces together. I... I, I think I get it now. The plant that we were running through, the one with the blue leaves... That's called Poison Joke, and we ran through it trying to get Apple Bloom yesterday. This isn't any curse, it's just a small infection that plays jokes on who we are. Rainbow narrowed her eyes at this revelation, huffing before turning back to Zakora. Okay, fine, but what about the cauldron and the chanting, or even the spooky masks? Zakora only laughed as she motioned to a few of the masks that survived the bombardment the Rainbow Main Pegasus put her hut through. While everything else was nearly destroyed, the masks remained intact. Treasures of the native land where I am from. This one speaks hello, and this one gestures welcome. She turned her hands at the cauldron, as the same brew was brimming towards the rim of the large bowl. The words I chant were from olden times, something that you call a nursery rhyme. Twilight looked to the cauldron. And that liquid is... The cure. She turned her head to the guardian when he spoke, hostilities lowered for the brief moment as he finished her thought for her. Zakora had sent me to retrieve some herbal ingredients for the mixture, one of which was the petal that you saw me hand to her. With these mixed together just right, the brew needs to be absorbed into bath water, and all you'd need to do is just, well, take a bath, plain and simple. But I tried to find a cure in all the books I had in my library, but couldn't find anything. What book is this? Twilight turned back to the pages, bringing the cover over and perking up in surprise when she found it to be a book that she disregarded from the title alone. Having dealt with supernatural entities and topics, she found it to be nothing but junk compared to real-life situations, even though magic in and of itself was supernatural. Twilight's ears folded back when she realized and registered the name, almost berating herself for assuming the book to be fake garbage, when in actuality it held the answers to their problem. 
Nate stood off to the side, watching as the others began to come around as well, their guilt for their racist attitudes towards Sakura showing as they all began apologizing for their false pretenses about her. Seeing there was no need for the gun anymore, he slung it over his shoulder, letting the strap keep it bound to his back just right of the backpack. Just as he thought to leave, he remembered the flasks that he found. Glancing at his bag, he knelt down and rummaged through the pockets again. Only this time, he brought the flasks out for everyone in the room to see. Zakora was the first to notice. My, my. What is this you have obtained? Two flasks that have pure magic sustained? Every pony followed Zakora's attention to the two square bottles as the zebra took them, examining both as she eyed the rich, thick nectar that could literally be melted into anything. Pure magic synthesized and stored in flasks like these were almost non-existent. The mere fact that Nate Schmidt was able to find not one, but two in his endeavor to cure the poison joke was nothing short of luck. But something was wrong with these two flasks. Wherever this magic came from, it was not of an amorphous shape. In fact, there was no way one could meld anything from it, so why was it stored this way? Another purpose by the users? The colors of the two did seem familiar. Perhaps they were related to the royal sisters of Canterlot who rule over Equestria through the cycles of night and day. Whatever the case, these flasks were important, special in their own way. Discarding them or even opening them was heavily discouraged as the magic would be wasted in either scenario, so she gave them back. A very interesting find you may have come across, however I recommend that you not use this right now, or all of it will be lost. Nate looked down at the two glowing flasks, eyeing them as Sakura walked back to her cauldron, mixing up the new potion to aid the main six. Was that it? No explanation as to why he shouldn't use these or do anything with them? She had described them as magic in its purest form, right? Why can't he experiment and try to finally acquire magic of his own to better defend himself here in Equestria? But he trusted Zakora's judgment, but it wasn't often that she led him on such a blatant cliffhanger of information. I guess this must be important in one way or another. Anyways, with the flasks momentarily dealt with, the main six were ready to head back to Ponyville with Zakora in tow. Nate, on the other hand, just wanted to go back home and sleep this shithole of a day off. Lord knows that he needed it after all the crap they had to go through to help these ponies, even with their bigotry active most of the time. <sighs> Goddamn ponies. Sighing, he turned and managed to slip away before anyone the wiser. Making his way back towards the more docile section of the Everfree, Nate descended down into his various tunnels, clearing it of the occasional pest here and there as he went. When he finally got back to his hub, he was quick to enter his home once again and take a load off. Dumping the backpack by the door and putting his guns away, Nate placed the two flasks on the kitchen table, leaving them be as he went to take off the clothing that he's worn all day. Matted and sweaty himself, he felt dirty with gunpowder, ashes, and bits of wooden flesh from the Everfree Forest creatures. Shaking off a piece of skin, he went into the only extension in his building, turning on the faucet to the shower and stepping in when it was ready. As he cleaned himself down, he failed to notice the pulsating hue of light just outside of his curtain. The glow of the flasks intensified for a brief moment, then receded back to its dimmer glow. In the time, the light was brighter. The orange flasks seemed to have more than just a bit of unknown magic swirling through it. After all, pure magic doesn't have a face, or sunset orange eyes. Well, it was only a matter of time until something happened. Because you can't take two things like that from the castle and expect nothing to happen. Now let's get on to our magical donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkside, Only One Thing, and Dash of Evergreen. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Sword of Rutherford and Mordred, Omicron Library, Will Chris, Twinkie, Hadzaza, Riot Soul, Maverick, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.